Yo, 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 yo! What's up, all you burner stoners and potheads out there? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How are all you v- 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 vipers doing out there, Mrs. Weedman? Mr. Weedman? How the hell are you? Cold. I knew you were going to fucking say that. <laughs> you knew it. Because I was, was going to say it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Fall Cold. is here. Fall is here in Illinois. It is Burp. it is 52 degrees out. And I know that's not cold for some people. But it was like 80 last week. Yes. That's why we're all freezing right now because the temperature drop. It, it, it happens all the time. It doesn't drastically – it drastically changes so quick here in Illinois. It doesn't gradually change. It goes from – it can go from 90 to 48 like it was yes, last night. Mm-hmm. You know? I don't mind – the cold weather to sleep in. I love this weather when you don't have air conditioning on, you don't have heat on, you just have open one or two windows, windows open and yeah. you get a nice flow of air. But sleeping at night in this weather under two or three blankets, you're cuddling with your loved one or cuddling by yourself or cuddling cuddle- by yourself. You could cuddle by yourself. You just hug a pillow. Cuddle your arm. Cuddle yourself. You just give yourself <laughs> some love. Whatever. Whatever. I, I, Whatever. It's, just, it's just so nice. To sleep in this weather, we're not having any kind of electronics keeping you warm or cold, and I love it. I love it. It's hoodie weather right now. It's hoodie and jean weather and, and high top sneakers. It's great. High tops are in my in my closet, looking fly right now. So mm-hmm. this is my favorite time of the year. It's late September, October. Oh, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. How about you? Yeah. You don't like it. Uh, I don't like being cold, but I really don't like being super hot. So <laughs> figure out where that place is and send me a message. Right here, right now is the place we need to be at. The weather is perfect. I the like sun's been out every day. mild weather in all <laughs> ways and forms. <laughs> like 60 to 80. That'd be great. With no humidity. It's hard to find. Tell me where. It's California. Yeah, northern. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Nothing against California. No, we love California. It's too freaking expensive. We're, and yeah, we can't afford to live there. <laughs> fire. Good weed. Good weed. <laughs> really good <Yeah>. weed. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to smoke. Yeah. And we're smoking home grow. We're, I, I uh, did the show last night with Big Earl, our grow hour show, and I busted out the Weed Man 420 Chronicles experimental stream. And I had some ground up still, and we're going to smoke that tonight. And here it is. I love this strain. I have just some fatty nugs left from this strain that I grew two years ago. And it's just, man, still smoking great. Talking with Big Earl last night about it, and he's like, yeah, I remember, you know, it's good stuff when you gave me that nug. And uh, I love this strain. It was like my favorite grow because it was the one grow. It was my second grow that I didn't know what I was really still doing. But for some reason, this grow came out phenomenal and the nugs came out great and I, it's got to be genetics it's it's 99.9 percent genetics i mean you know that's just big girl stuff he grow he he's good he's a good breeder so uh in honor of yesterday's show and in honor of big girl and in our, our our goings i'm smoking the wee man 420 chronicles experimental strain miss wee man how was it mm, delicious <coughs> i was ready for that Oh, we also want to do a little uh, <coughs> shout out to everybody in Florida. The state is under <coughs> hurricane watch and warning category five. This morning, hurricane they're getting whacked. has just whacked the state. We have uh, a lot of family, a lot of friends, and friends all along that Palm Coast. I think they refer to it also, as Tampa. Also, our niece who our niece drew our, who drew our uh, yes our, our podcast uh, logo for YouTube. She is in. She didn't do our. She did our animation. For animation, YouTube. yeah. She's yes. in the uh, and she her area got hit really hard. Yeah, they don't know if their home is still standing, yeah. and they're one of thousands of people in the same yeah. situation. Plus, our so. listeners that are down there too yeah. that have, that that I see you posting stuff and talking about it, man. We're we're we're. we're, we're Man, we're thinking about you. We're, we're we're throwing good vibes down there, you know, and, and everybody down in Florida right now. Also, Puerto Rico, yeah, got hit really hard. Also, Cuba, Cuba. Uh, all the other countries that are around those areas too. They got hit. Jamaica, probably yeah. Bermuda, um, Haiti. Everybody got some piece of it. So coming up into the Panhandle of Florida, you know, going in through Orlando up into the coast of going up to the Carolinas. We wish everybody nothing but good vibes. And hopefully everybody's safe. Ms. Weeman, you got anything else to say about that? No, just hope the recovery efforts are efficient and everybody gets their at least utilities and food and water, you know, back in order yeah, soon. Yeah. 
um, we're, so, we're, like I said, sending good vibes to everybody down there yep. and smoking big bowls for you all down there too. So, um, we are watching the Great British Baking Show, and we watched episode one, and we were doing the um, uh, with with our kids fantasy fantasy draft draft right, and it's been with fun. a new adult. Uh, yes. Uh, season. Season. The and latest season. We all came like shit last, the first episode. None of us won any points. We no, all picked nothing. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, on behalf of all of us, we, our son is coordinating it and he couldn't find links that didn't have spoilers in them. Right. So everybody was, was making their top picks for all the different categories based on just being able to read a little paragraph about each person. Right. Not no visual. There's no photo of the person, there's no photo of the things they bake, literally just a paragraph about where they're from and what they do for a living. Yes. And so very blind vote on that. Lead. Yeah, so, I came yeah. I came pretty close. One, one the, uh, the the guy uh, the person that I picked to win uh, Star Baker for the day, he came in third. And I was, I mean, mm-hmm. he that's, was close. That's so. not bad. No, not bad. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but the two people who I didn't think were going to do anything killed it, that mm-hmm. show. But also the one, the one woman, she was very good, uh, very good at v- making a velvet cake. That was like her family. The red velvet. Spe- yeah, yeah, the red velvet cake. It's, that was like her speciality, you know, where she was, knew how to do it. And she, hers was pretty legit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, we, we picked uh, round two. Super stoked. Hopefully, uh, I, we actually had to do a lot more in this pick. But besides pick, it, it, kind of like this, it goes, you have to pick somebody to win the technical, somebody that wins the star star baker, and then somebody gets voted off. So we did all three of those. And then we picked uh, the person who was going to win. The three people are going to make it to the finals. Right. And then we picked and then the, finalist. the finalist all yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So... I'm going to tell you my person mm-hmm. that's going to win the whole thing. I've been going with that person since the beginning, and that is... Go ahead. Uh, I always pronounce his name wrong. Uh, Not Sandor. Sandro. So, Sandro. So that's my pick. Who was your Who was your star baker? Uh, I think Did you go Dawn? Dawn, Dawn the, yeah. the sleeper pick, though. Yeah. Sleeper pick. That's what That's what, That's what. what uh, Polly said. Not such a sleeper. Polly said that, that she was the sleeper pick. Hmm. <laughs> so so if anyone doesn't watch it we've talked about this show on our show a number of times because we really enjoy it but it's just an elimination contest with everyday home bakers nobody with any professional skill set and they compete and it is the happiest nicest competition <sighs> show they're so nice to each other they're just nice human beings yes. And the the hosts of the show are corny but fun, and it's just uh, like a very wholesome, it's happy show. show. There's nothing that you could really complain about nothing. by watching it. Nope. Maybe you don't like you someone's like, personality, right? Or whatever. But if you like baked goods, yeah, it's and great. you like you like cookies and biscuits and yeah. cakes and breads, and they do each week. It's fun. Yeah. I I, so each, I didn't yeah. think I was gonna like this show. It when grows we, on you. It, I, I mean, like by like the third or fourth episode of the first season, first season we watched, I was like, I'm hooked. Yeah. <laughs> and so each week someone gets eliminated and they have three cooking categories per week. And two of the cooking ca- cooking contests or cook-offs are... Um, Technical? They're, no. Two no. of them are recipes that they were able to preview and practice oh, at yeah. home. And that's and then, called the signature is the first one, and then the and then and the, the, showstopper. Uh, the showstopper. And then the technical is a blind recipe that they get no photos and no directions, just a list of ingredients. And some people are like, "Oh, I've eaten one of these in my life," and other people are completely thrown off by yep. it. And they got to put this dessert together. So anyway, and then at the end, someone gets star baker for being the best baker of the week, and someone gets voted off. So it's super fun. And then do I think doing this fantasy um, thing will be fun. I like the first episode, yeah, just but something but more. So here's the thing, though. I was thinking about this when we were doing the picks yesterday. Uh, I got angry. I got it didn't make the show like just nice and calming for oh, me. Oh, because you were thinking too much. You were, you had like a stake in the game, right? Yeah. Well, what do we win? We don't win anything. <laughs> I, just like the bakers, they went a, they went a little a little. little thing. Are we going to get a little trophy? It would be kind of funny if we did. I want to make something, but. It just made me anxious because now it's like I have skin in the game. Now I know there's no money, but we're playing for for playing for pride. You want to be able to say that you <laughs> we're won. We're playing for pride. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so then the competitive comes out, and you're like, fuck, I lost. Fuck, fuck. But nobody got any points. We all were big losers on yeah. that one. So it's fair game starting on episode. Now, uh, now it's game on. Yeah, now it's game on. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win, Mr. Weed Man. <laughs> we shall see. Yeah, we shall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read something before we start the show. Someone posted this. I saw somewhere. I don't remember where. I think it was maybe on LinkedIn or it was on one social media. Somebody that I follow. It's not even an influencer. It's just somebody in the cannabis industry, cannabis game. And I thought it was very impactful because we see this across the country right now. And I've talked about MSOs before. And I've talked about right uh, on the last episode um, how there was layoffs. This is what happens when you corporatize an industry. And I'm going to read this. And I thought it was good. The cannabis industry has a short-term game problem. 100% on that. It's a great title. After and this person worked is uh, working in the cannabis industry for eight years, the person noticed a few trends in businesses, especially the larger MSOs. And I posted something on my social media today about the top 10 MSOs all owe money, about $500 million dollars to the IRS and haven't paid it yet. And I, and I posted it with a link on there, so read it, because it's a fairly long article that I don't know if I'll read on the next episode. F- and here's what this person who who is talking about the larger MSOs. They follow meaningless metrics without understanding their implications. I agree, and here's what that is a means. that they, they follow the standard corporate business metrics instead of understanding the cannabis itself. Chasing licenses and expansion without the necessary infrastructure for long-term success. This is a huge one. They they have not set a solid foundation. And I I speak about this a lot. How do you build a house, Mrs. Wee Man? What What is the base of the house that keeps the structure solid? Your foundation. Right. There is no foundation built in any corporate MSO cannabis and here's why because they don't care about that because all they care about is profit and loss inflating the business not elevating the people that's a big one because you have a lot of people that came to the over to the cannabis industry and left the industry that they were in because they love cannabis love cannabis they thought it was going to be something cultural it's not in, 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 in corporate cannabis. I'm sorry to say there is no culture in corporate cannabis, and I know this for a fact. Okay? Mrs. Weeman can attest to it. I know this truly. There is no culture, no understanding of the history of cannabis, meaning like the love, the passion that people have for the plant. And where it's come from. Yes, they can they can look up stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. It's dollars and cents. This person also writes, If we're going to make a sustained impact in the cannabis space and actually create an industry, everything should start with people. I agree with that, but it also should start with the plant. People who know the product... People who look ahead, people who are invested in the cannabis industry careers and the success of their peers, the belief of people. The long-term solution is much different, this person writes. Follow passion. Find the people who want opportunity and care about the industry as a whole. That's huge. And I've said that before too, not in the exact words, but I speak When I talk about cannabis, it's all passion. It's all heart because I love it. And a lot of people out there do. And they're not in it for the profitability of making themselves billionaires or selling their company in five years or getting shareholders or investors. They don't care about that. They are passionate about the plant and about what it does and about the industry of being it that everybody can get in it and everybody should be able to make money and everybody should who should just be able to grow their own plant because they love the plant. Chase quality, efficiency and empathy. How do you how do us, the cannabis community, make this a good environment for employees and help them create a good environment for customers? You go to dispensaries, not all of them. 
but you go to dispensaries and you, sometimes you're herded like cattle. There's no experience. Mrs. Weeman has heard mm-hmm. me talk about this. There's no experience when you go to a dispensary in some of them. And a lot of it has to do with the rules and the laws of the state, of course. But in, in, in some of the corporate cannabis world, it's just like a, it's just like a store. You want them in and you want them out as fast as possible to get the next person rung up. Last one. Grow your people. Build them up and they will build up your business. That is – can't ask for anything more on that one. That's, I don't even need to say anything else. That is should be the number one thing on your agenda or on your on your affirmations or on your – like written down on a board in your office. Remember the people. Remember helping them. Here's my line, Mrs. Wee Man. How many times have I used this line? And every person I know what you're going to say. I know you know what I'm going to say. And everybody who knows me knows I say this at least once a week. No one knows. Nobody cares how, how much, much you, you know. know. They, they only, only... want to know how much you care. Never forget that, people. That's and the only... greatest, one of the foremost leaders, I didn't make this up. I wish I created that line because I say it enough. And I've always said when I when I've said a line long enough or or took someone's idea after two years, I would call it my own. This line I can never call my own because this this person who spoke this on stage, who I listened and he said this line, and I read his book afterwards, said it. And his name is John C. Maxwell, the foremost speaker on leadership in the world. Twenty one irrefutable laws of leadership. Phenomenal book. Phenomenal speaker. That line there says it all. All you have to do is show that you care. I can know everything about cannabis. I could be a foremost expert on cannabis, which I am not. But in the end, nobody cares about that. They, I mean, they like it and enjoy it. But the caring part is where people f- get uplifted. And then they will understand what you're teaching because you showed them that you cared about them and what their needs and their wants and their desires are in their life. That's the line right there, people. That is the line. So, Mrs. Weedman. Mr. Weedman. You ready to get the show started? Yep. Let's do this. New cannabinoid. What is it called? Delta 6A 10A THC or... Delta tree. Three. 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 <laughs> Here in Illinois, we Wait, say tree. It's Delta... S- 6A, 10A, THC, also called Delta 3 THC. It's a mildly psychoactive cannabinoid and THC isomer occurring in trace amounts in cannabis. It's also semi-synthetic cannabinoid when manufacturers convert CBD or THC into its using specialized catalyst. The primary effects of Delta 6A, 10A, or 3, tree, THC includes mental euphoria and physical relaxation in, up, in doses upwards of 8 milligrams. Hmm. These effects are similar to Delta 8 THC but less pronounced. When it comes to the health benefits of Delta 6A, 10A, THC, there's someone unknown. But since it derives from THC, you may expect similar relief from pain and inflammation as well as support for the newer protection of healthy sleep and appetite. Ooh, I like that. In this this article we're reading, um, it's going to talk a little bit about the health benefits and adverse reactions and the legal status, of course. I was talking with Big Earl yesterday on the episode and we were talking about we cannot wait to see – when someone can create a plant that you see multiple cannabinoids, like not just THC and CBD, and you might see a little bit of CBG, but having more than three, like having like eight, seven, with higher amounts of cannabinoid percentages, like your CBG is like a six, your your CB your CBD is like a ten, and your THC is like a nine, like a twelve, and then you got some THCV in there, and you might have some now delta six, delta uh, delta six eight ten, uh, 
you have a multiple range. Remember we talked about the episode where you we, where you can – one day there will be a company where you'll go in, sit down, and you'll want all these mm-hmm. cannabinoids that you need yep. for your body. And someone will make a strain for you with that. Mm-hmm. Or they'll make a strain blend. That's what I'm saying. Like grind it. Like yeah. different strains You could together. do that too. Uh, Delta 6810 – THC has many names. Whether you whether you see someone mention D six A or Delta three THC, it's the same minor cannabinoid, and one of the seven THC isomers that naturally occur in hemp and cannabis. Producers use chemical catalysts to convert it from CBD to, or Delta nine THC. Chemical synthesis involves changing the molecular structure of these two cannabinoids using specialized equipment. Delta six A ten A THC is mild intoxicant and gets you gently high, like that. Especially for the newer smoker, gently high, the one that needs to wake up their endocannabinoid system before they're ready for Delta nine. You can start them off on this. I don't mm-hmm. want. I don't like the whole specialized equipment you got to use to get that. Maybe one day you can grow this instead. Uh, but similar to the effects of Delta eight, but with less potency. Some users report sativa like effects, such as mental stimulation, pain relief, and mood enhancement after consumption. Molecular structure of 6A, 10A, THC. The chemical formula uh, in plain English it's consists of 21 carbon atoms, 30 hydrogen atoms, and 2 oxygen atoms. Hmm. Uh, Delta 3, 6A, 10A, THC has 2 uh, and 9... Oh, man, I practiced this word too. <laughs> antomyers. Cannabinoids have their own antomyers with Delta 6A, 10A, THC. The, these are 1S and 1R. Imagine you have two identical screws. Ooh, that look the same and come with similar physical qualities. However, one screw can turn one way and the other goes only in the opposite direction. Would that screw you up, Mrs. Weedman? Would a screw if it went one way or the other? Because you're used to going righty, tighty, lefty, loosey, right? Mm-hmm. But imagine if the screw went lefty, loosey, righty. Uh, the opposite. The opposite. You'd That'd be, be, you'd be confusing. Screwed. <laughs> you'd be screwed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Using this analogy, the uh, 1S uh, antimyer enters the body and screws clockwise, uh, inducing similar euphoria to Delta 8 THC. On the contrary, the 1R antimyers have no intoxicating effects because it screws up anti-clockwise. Studies on Delta uh, 3 THC, the studies are few and far between because it recently discovered isomer of Delta 9. However, of the studies available, we found that Delta 6A, 10A THC, an intriguing cannabinoid with outstanding potential treating convulsions. Here's what research says, uh, the effects and health benefits of Delta 3. Uh, what's the optimal dose? Uh, we talked about this, 8 milligrams or higher in the human participants, causing noticeable change in heart rate and some gentle behavior differences. The research team also reported that Delta 6A, 10A had almost the same effects as Delta 1 THC, which is the least potent of all THC isomers. So you know what's great about that? Like I said, you could start somebody off on a 1, go to 3, go to 6A, 10, go to 8, and then you're at 9, and maybe 10 because it's actually stronger than 9, and maybe go to HHC or THOOO. There's... Nah, look at you all confused Whoa. over there. Whoa. But what I'm saying Whoa. is, though, we now are finding out that the different THC levels, the different deltas, you can actually give people lower doses to to not get into that full effect psychoactive to where there's times where during the day where I just want to – I don't want to get so psychoactive. I want like some – and I don't want to smoke CBD because it's, I want something that's going to give me a little, little heady. Right. You know? Anticonvulsant properties. Uh, Delta 6A, 10A THC has a synthetic along called EA1477. When anticonvulsant properties were mentioned in the study on dogs in the 1950s. Interesting. The authors found that EA1477 was successful in blocking uh, electroshocks induced seizures. The anticonvulsant seizure reducing properties of the compound are similar to those of Delta 6A, 10A THC. However, the while THC makes the user feel high, EA1477 demonstrates simply less potent mild altering effects. Uh, Delta 6A10A benefits. Uh, keep in mind that uh, this Delta is likely has the same benefits as THC, such as neuroprotection, painkiller, anti-inflammation, appetite stimul- stimulation, sleep, and antibacterial. Hmm. What, uh, what does Delta 3THC uh, feel like? The effects of this are mildly intoxicating with the balance between mental high and physical relaxation. This results from Delta 6A, 10A, THC's ability to interact with the CB1 receptors in the brain and the central nervous system. 
That's awesome. Also, your fork effects similar to Delta Eight, but uh, but high, but roughly with the three fourths of its potency. Some users also attribute like to have really high effects, uh, mood ele- elevation, better focus. I like that, and uh, and including um, uh, uh, increasing in energy. Uh, the most interesting facts about this is that it can strengthen the effects of other THC isomers. When you browse through forums like uh, like Reddit, you'll notice some users suggesting a combination of Delta-8 and tel- Delta-10 THC with some Delta-6, 8, 10 as a way to achieve strong euphoric high. Uh, that's what they say, not what Mr. Weedman says. Um, is it legal? Federally legal as long as it comes from hemp and contains no more than 0.3% of Delta-9. So remember that. Uh, Delta-3 versus other cannabinoids. Now that you know the difference between them, uh, Delta-9, let's focus on how it compares with other isomers. Uh, 610 versus Delta-10. Both cannabinoids isomers are occurring in cannabis in negligible amounts. They can be synthesized from isolated CBD or THC. Uh, and uh, versus Delta-10 can get you high. Delta-10 is about 60% more potent than Delta-6, 8, 10A. Uh, THC. There are more Delta 6, 8, 10, 8 THC products falsely labeled as Delta 10 due to the lack of lab testing. Remember that. Quality. You need to know where you're getting your shit from. Um, they produce the same effects and offer the same health benefits, but with uh, different strengths. Uh, Delta 3 versus CBD has strikingly similar chemical formulas, but the user different pathways to interact with your body and brain. Uh, a mild CB2 and CB2 agonist uh, causing intoxication. CBD is a non-intoxicant. It won't impair your thinking, judgment, or alter the perception of your surroundings. But Mrs. Wee Man has something to talk about CBD uh, and being psychoactive, so we'll talk about that in a minute. However, CBD, by all means, psychoactive, even though it's non-intoxicating. Hmm. The official definition of the word psychoactive is effective one's mind and behavior. And CBD, certain mechanisms will subtly change your mood, behavior, and perception without getting you high. This is Weedman. We'll talk more. Uh, the key takeaways. Uh, Delta 3, 6A, 10A, groundbreaking cannabinoid or something worth particular attention. has the same effects and health benefits as other versions of THC, but it comes with less euphoria and fewer physical sensations. Despite scarce research, scientists are optimistic when it comes to the anticonvulsant properties of Delta 6A, 10A, THC. The cannabinoid may be particularly useful in treating epileptic seizures or muscle spasticity, spasticity, spasticity induced by neurodegenerative conditions. Uh, currently, Delta 6, 8, 10, 8 products aren't, uh, aren't as popular as other isomers. If anything, we expect it to add those isomers to away uh, their intoxicating effects. So, great article. Really good. Uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. So now, another new cannabinoid. Another new one. It's great. There is 120 of them out there. Still finding them. Still. Yep. But now, to go into what we talked about, is CBD psychoactive? Yeah. Well, in fact, CBD is psychoactive, and here's why. I've got this article here that explains. In the cannabis space, the words psychoactive, intoxicating, and euphoric are often used interchangeably. It's common to hear the statement, unlike THC, CBD is non-psychoactive. But is this really true? To answer this question, it's important to first understand what the word psychoactive means. A psychoactive substance is a chemical that crosses the blood-brain barrier and gets into the brain and affects it in some way. Examples of psychoactive substances include caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, some analgesics, and cannabis, among others. As you can see, caffeine is psychoactive even though it doesn't give consumers that high feeling. CBD is psychoactive because it crosses the blood-brain barrier. The calming effects caused by CBD happen in the brain. If CBD was not psychoactive, then it would not be able to offer anxiety relief and other high center benefits. In the same way, caffeine will increase alertness without causing intoxication. CBD is not intoxicating, nor does it cause euphoria. An intoxicating compound will cause changes in one's mental state and cause one to lose control of their thought process or behavior. A good example is how alcohol affects mental ability and behavior. A euphoric chemical will alter one's sense of reality and spatial and sensorial perception and trigger excessive emotional feelings. CBD is not a euphoric chemical. 
While all intoxicating and euphoric chemicals are psychoactive, not all psychoactive chemicals are intoxicating or euphoric. Ha ha. Both CBD and THC cross the blood-brain barrier, meaning both are psychoactive. However, the two compounds interact with endocannabinoid receptors in the brain differently. When THC is consumed, it immediately floods the CB1 receptors in the brain and turns up the endocannabinoid tone. The presynaptic neurons are compelled to turn their volume and stop sending out regulating neurotransmitters. The overstimulation of CB1 receptors and downregulation of neurotransmitter release is responsible for the euphoric feeling in a very simplistic explanation. I don't think that's very simplistic. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, CBD, on the other hand, has a weak affinity for CB1 receptors. CBD binds weakly to these receptors and acts as a modulator. Some studies have shown that CBD is able to displace THC from CB1 receptors and therefore offset some of the intoxicating effects of THC. Some theories say if you smoke too much weed and you're way too head high that you can, this is me talking, not the article, that you could smoke a high CBD or a straight CBD and knock off the THC effect and kind of neutralize it. So there's theories. I have never tried it, but it's said to work. Um, And if you think about like the CBD uh, THC ratio products that are out there to smoke that you don't get as we're head high. One right now, right? You uh, don't get as yeah. head, you, it's not as heady. Not right this minute, but we're smoking one mm-hmm. that we got at the High Times Cannabis yes, Cup, and for we, sleep. we actually really like it. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Great. Um, according to researchers from the University of London College, the more CBD that's present in a strain, the lower the brain impairment that will be caused by consuming that strain. So CBD is psychoactive but not intoxicating. CBD will not cause euphoria. THC, on the other hand, is both psychoactive and intoxicating. THC will cause euphoria. Next time you come across the all-too-familiar cannabis lingo, CBD is non-psychoactive, now you'll have a better understanding about why that is incorrect. Pretty good. Cool. Yeah, that always yeah. helps. I mean, like because people have asked talking to neighbors who take CBD and they're like, is it going to get me like really, really high? I'm like, no, you're just going to feel nice in the body. But right. if you take too much, I have, I have smoked too much CBD where I did get a little. You, because it does have, it can have it a got, small it, amount. It got me a little yeah. heady, yeah. like a little, little psycho heady, mm-hmm. like not oh. psycho, like, like the Crazy? movie. No, not oh. like that. <laughs> <laughs> like your mind. Yes. A little mind. Yeah. High. Yes. Uh, what happens when you mix cannabis and psychedelics? Here's the thing. Psychedelics, uh, you know, LSD, mushrooms, DMT, uh, Hiawatha, all that stuff. People do use that and smoke cannabis. So, and as we see psychedelics, the movement happening now with psychedelics and states trying to pass laws to be able to use it medically, you have to know some of you newbies that might experiment with, with, with psilocybin to help with depression or anything like that. You have to know if you're going to smoke cannabis too, what's going to make you feel like, or is it going to affect you in any way? I have done both at the same time. And I mean, just depends on, on your, on who you are. Do you do things like hang people up in a tree? Like, like throw them up on a tree. I threw somebody in a tree. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, like, <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did. <laughs> that might have been a mixture of that was cannabis. A bit, and, that was a little bit of everything, though. Yeah, that, yeah, that a little was, bit of this. That, yeah, there was a lot of al- a, there was like alcohol little, involved in that. That's different. There was alcohol fruit involved. Fruit salad. Yes, there was a little. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> if anybody ever wants to come hang out with Mr. Weedman, I'll tell you the story. What and happened? And he won't throw you in a tree. I won't throw you in a tree. He promises. <laughs> alcohol was involved, though. So. Uh, the rise of psychedelics today is highly linked to the mystical experience it brings about. For those who have never tried psychedelics, it can be challenging to define what's it all about. 
We can try a, a mystical experience is a similar to religious experience as psychedelics and break the ego down. It can help you uh, see oneness with a greater being with the rest of the world, with nature. Uh, a mystical experience can help you see the world in new ways as the psychedelics have the power to help grow new neural connections, which is extremely beneficial for those suffering from anxiety, depression, and emotional problems. But one does have to be suffering from mental illness to benefit from psychedelics. Uh, mystical experiences are just part of it. And now a new study shows that mixing cannabis with psych psychedelics can embrace the mystical experience. Uh Reports that research out uh, of Imperial College of London has assessed online surveys taken by 321 individuals. Man, I want to be 320. I want to be one of those 321 individuals. <laughs> they discussed their psychedelic experiences and also admitted if they used cannabis simultaneously and if they did, the quantities consumed. The participants uh, responded to the survey seven days prior to their trip as well as one day after. It asked questions about several features of the trip, including their mystical experience, ego disillusions, and emotional breakthroughs. The research discovered that it's common among the respondents to the cannabis with psychedelics, such as psilocybin, ayahuasca, DMT, LSD, and mescaline. Uh, if you don't know what mescaline is from buttons, which is part of uh, uh, buttons are from a, um, uh, uh, what's the pokey, uh, prickly plants? Cactus. Cactus comes from the cacti. Uh, the respondents said it made their trip more intense. The researchers also reported it was associated with higher scores of mystical types experience, ego dissolution, and visual alterations. Of course, you get, just know this. If you if you don't microdose you're, and you take a normal dose, you will get the visual effects of, of using um, psychedelics. That's why they're called psychedelics. <laughs> um, it was also interesting to note that respondents who consume smaller doses of cannabis with psychedelics reported less challenging experiences, which are associated with feeling grief, fear, and sanity compared to those who didn't use cannabis. On the other hand, those who consume more cannabis with psychedelics reported more of these challenge aspects. Yes, anything too much of anything is going to have a different effect on you. Remember that. <laughs> Follow good dosing procedures, <laughs> please. Um However, the research discussed the limitations of the study, most particularly in the fact that they were not able to observe the participants directly. They did still note it was a good start for other studies. It's quite plausible that some individuals may use cannabis in an attempt to alter effects principally induced by the psychedelic. In the same way with some cannabis user reports using cannabis to self-medicate for psychiatric systems, the research wrote. Future-controlled research is needed to better assess the casual interactions between cannabis and psychedelics. Overall, the study provided the first quantitative insight into the modulation of subjective psychedelic effects by cannabis, uh, they wrote. Is mixing cannabis the future of psychedelics? Co-administering cannabis with psychedelics is nothing new. In fact, in 2006, 149 students found almost 60% regular mix both cannabis and psilocybin. In 2019, a review that was published in the Journal of Addictive Diseases describes that uh, among participants who combined psilocybin, the, the cannabis or other substances, there was a notable increase in emotional intensity. For their subjects, the experience was described to be stressful and frightening, though it, this is an uncommon reaction when you compare it to what other antidotes uh, on the Internet say. Mixing cannabis and psychedelics may have powerful healing properties. Uh, that's good. I mean, I could see them both because, I mean, they are using them for both right now. For both cannabis and psychedelics, are, are, they're finding are helping people with a lot of things. So depression being one of them. Uh, the single drug will also behave differently in combinations of drugs, said Andrew uh, Shadane, PhD, Metech co-founder and CEO of The Future Human. Uh, they see the potential of the combination for treating medical disorders. Another startup, this time in Israel, called Cannabotech, also sees the medical potential of mixing mushrooms and cannabis. They think that it would could one day benefit cancer patients by reducing the chemotherapy treatments they need to take. We know that patients need a minimum amount of chemo. But a lot of other people can't survive this because of side effects, so they stop treatment. Uh, they are currently working on treatments so far, and cell models has also been shown effective in killing cancer cells when used uh, together with chemotherapy. That's good stuff. So the conclusion. Uh, what, what they know about mixing cannabis and psychedelics is certainly still in its infancy. It may have powerful cancer-fighting abilities and can even help treat challenging emotional and mental illnesses. Uh, looking forward to more results and seeing what it can do like i said a lot of states trying to pass laws on psychedelics right now and for years people have been using 
psychedelics, microdo microdosing to help make them focus better and help get them zoned in better. I'm not talking about taking to trip to go on a trip. This is like therapeutically therapeutic, but also using it for work. Like being able to take a, 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 maybe like a half a gram of, of, of a mushroom and being able to focus better. Well, so, you can buy a lot now. A oh, lot yeah. of different, like magical mushroom. I, I get pop-ups all the time. There magical a, mushroom. It's like a um, powder that you can put in your coffee. And it's micro. It's essentially microdosing. Yeah, I just read an article too. The first, I don't know if it was Florida, Colorado, or California. But the first uh, magic mushroom shop just opened up. Hmm. Yeah, I think it was Florida. So... Uh, so they're selling magic mushrooms now hmm. in very small dose, but they're selling it they're at a legal it. dispensary, though. Right. So PTSD. Yes. We've talked about it on, on some episodes. What did you find out, Mrs. Weed Mine? Yep. More studies prove THC has a positive effect on PTSD. A new study adds more evidence to the theory that THC has a positive effect on post-traumatic stress disorder. Published in the journal Neuropharmacology and conducted by researchers from Wayne State University, the study found that the combination of a specific type of therapy and moderate amounts of THC were particularly beneficial for people, people with PTSD. Researchers conducted a double-blind experiment on 51 participants. These subjects were randomly given 7.5 milligrams of THC, or a placebo pill, and were kept under supervision and timed. Participants were scanned on an fMRI with researchers conducting regular check-ins on their mental state. The results are clear. After consuming their, their pills, at the peak of THC's effect, researchers provided participants with emotional regulation tasks, like showing participants participants triggering images and repeating this with the goal of having them reappraise them and thus successfully regulating their emotions. Results showed that only participants who'd consumed THC were able to reduce and manage their negative emotions. The compound also activated areas of the brain that are normally stunted in people with PTSD. THC may prove to be a beneficial pharmacological adjunct to cognitive reappraisal therapy in the treatment of PTSD, wrote the study's authors. This study isn't the first to link, to find a link between THC and PTSD, but it is the first to see THC's impact during cognitive reappraisal tasks for individuals with PTSD, which is important. When patients are able to successfully reappraise their emotions, they're more likely to repeat this behavior in the future, reducing anxiety and negative responses. This suggests that THC could become an effective way of treating these patients and improving their symptoms. PTSD patients are some of the most vocal proponents of the benefits of medicinal cannabis, with many claiming that THC helps them with their migraines, panic attacks, and overwhelming emotions. So let's keep uh, hoping that more of those studies get done because that's that's huge. Yeah. Inflation is impacting all of us around the world, not just the United States, around the world, and high inflation could impact the cannabis sales, and some say it already is, and they did a little survey. So what contributed to your change in your cannabis consumption this year? 29% uh, said health and lifestyle reasons. 27.9% said inflation and rising prices. 26.8% said emotional or psychological needs. 25.8% financial hardships or the economy. And 22.1% said weed prices have gone up or gone down. And some people say uh, they don't mind spending $30 for an eighth or even 57% people would say they wouldn't mind paying 40 for it. I said, well, fucking come to Illinois and see how much you're paying mm, here. Yeah. Jeez, ridiculous. Um, some people are like frustrated that uh, states like Colorado and some of the legacy states that have been around doing it for a little while are pissed off that cannabis prices in their state have gone down so much. And someone commented going, well, what do you think would happen when other states opened up? You were one of the first many years ago, and now there's other states all around. They're not coming to your state anymore and buying, buying cannabis like they used to. You know, So how could you be mad about it? So Colorado prices have dropped to the lowest point since recreational pot sales began in 2014, according to the Department of Revenue. That's crazy. Like, uh, 
The most recent report shows cannabis flowering sitting at $658 a pound, about 7% less uh, at 709 released in June, the previous record low. And trim al- uh, allocated for extraction and infused products slid to $76 per pound, the lowest point since the category was first tracked in 2018, and a 37% drop from the previous year. I mean, what do you expect? You can't get mad about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I mean, I mean, other states open it up. It's a, it's a free market pricing too, you know. And uh, here's the other thing, though, too. In certain states, you're seeing the race to the bottom. And I've heard that not only just in this article, but in a lot of people talking about the cannabis in, in a lot of states that have been around, like especially Michigan, which we in a couple of years ago you were able to get fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a pound. It's now five hundred dollars a pound. I mean, and fucking Michigan's got fireweed, you know, California, same thing. Croptober's coming up here. I mean, yeah. everybody's going to start harvesting. Now, if you had an overabundance or depending on the state you're in, if you're outdoor, there's a, a lot of weed going to happen now. And you're going to see prices drop into the bottom again, unless unless there was like flooding or rain or fires that burn crops down a lot. And I haven't really heard much about it. It's been a little bit, but not nothing crazy like it was last year and the year before. But still, there's a lot of weed out there, and not including the traditional market weed that's going to be coming out too here in Croptober. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of weed. Here's something really shitty. You know how much I love going to Oklahoma? You know how much I've got, had so much fun I've had in Tulsa? Yes. Well, the court rules Oklahoma won't vote on legalizing cannabis in November, and and there is a lot of talk that the governor, governor – had a lot of fucking like hands in the fucking voters box pulling the fucking votes out hmm. to make it go so they can't vote uh, to legalize it at all, which is and the voters are pissed, man. I I I'm fucking appalled. I mean, this is the rumor that's going on, but in a bunch of articles I read, they're talking about the governor pulled votes to sway it the way he wanted it to go. So Oklahomians. I'd be fucking pissed and I'd vote that guy out if I was you because without you guys going recreational, your your state will not thrive. There's so much competition and so much weed being grown and so and there's only I don't even know how many medical cards are given. I don't even think it's a million yet. And out of a state that has 4 million people, 5 million people, I th- I think. Um and there's 1200 dispensaries and licensed 8,000 cultivators. It's not even reversed. That's just fucking nuts. Mm-hmm. And there's, I mean, there's just not enough. And then they got the metric system they just added in. And a lot of dispensaries haven't uh, and cultivators haven't put their metric system in, which is the counting and stuff like that. That's a system they use in a lot of states uh, so they can keep track of everything. A lot of these dispensaries and cultivators didn't implement it yet, and they're going to start getting fined. The whole fuck. I mean, there's gonna be a fucking crazy shutdown. It's just garbage, man. It's just so brutal. <laughs> uh, in New York, uh, the laws are gonna be coming up here soon. And home cultivation in New York is awesome. You, you got to be 21, uh, only an authorized person at a private residence. Uh, certified patients can grow up to three mature plants and three immature plants, and then a designated caregiver can grow to six mature plants and six. That's awesome. So you got like 12 plants growing at one time. And if you're a caregiver. Make some money, and then you got um, uh, the, the just the patient that's able to go three and three. You fucking get some weed, man. Get a little system. Listen to our show. You know uh, the the grow hour. So uh, home cannabis can't be sold, and, but uh, but a certified patient or designated caregiver can transfer to another certified patient or designated caregiver without compensation. Up to three ounces of cannabis and up to twenty four ounces of concentrated cannabis. That's fucking awesome. You can help people, man. Can all collaborate, like I talked about, and come together and have some fucking grow going. If you don't have the room in your apartment, you're not allowed to. You find somebody with a house that you do, man, you come together. Do it. It's fucking awesome. Uh, how does home cultivated cannabis need to be stored uh, in a secure location with private residences or in the or its ground with reasonable measures such as the cannabis is not readily accessible by anyone under the age of 21? Conducting cannabis cultivation in an enclosed are not plainly visible from to the public view locking your story cannabis in a manner that prevents theft or loss of course you want to make sure your shit is safe man that's your shit um can a designated caregiver receive any compensation from certified patients only reimbursement for designated caregivers actually cost of goods like i said come together right now and grow 
Over me. There you go. <laughs> Material or utilities, which in, man, this took. I didn't even read this article when I was talking about this on the last couple episodes. So New York, man, good for you, people, man, all over New York, because there's a lot of counties that still have not fucking opened up yet. Grow your own fucking weed then in that county. Mm-hmm. Fucking listen to our show. We'll teach you how to grow. Reach out to Earl two one seven. He'll teach you how to grow. Man, we love it. Fucking awesome. Uh, the last episode <laughs> you talked about camping, glamping, right? glamping, glamping, and you talked about Airbnbs before, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. What about now? What's when we're talking about? What was the last one to talk about? This Besides is, my house, a cannabis friendly atmosphere. Yeah, <laughs> this is cannabis friendly hotels that are targeting high end travelers. Uh, though the cannabis legalization movement in the U.S. has spawned plenty of bud and breakfasts and weed friendly budget hotels, a handful of boutique hoteliers are targeting the high end <laughs> cannabis traveler. No pun intended. <laughs> Expansion at the sector's more premium end comes as the number of Americans interested in cannabis-related travel has swelled, according to Brian Applegarth, founder of the Cannabis Travel Association and Cultivar Brands, a strategic marketing agency specializing in the cannabis industry. In early 2020, just prior to the pandemic, Cultivar partnered with MMGY Travel Intelligence to analyze the burgeoning cannabis traveler segment. They discovered that 29% of all active leisure travelers in the U.S. could be identified as being part of a growing cannabis-motivated travel audience. Findings from these recent pandemic-era surveys released this summer indicate that the size of that audience has increased to 37% of all active leisure travelers, with Gen Z and millennial, millennial travelers in particular reporting overwhelming interest in engaging in at least one cannabis-related activity while on vacation. 37%. That's, that's big. That's big. There's also this sophisticated kind of connoisseur that's emerging, said Applegarth. And the data shows if you look at the median and mean household incomes, the cannabis-interested audience has a very compelling profile when it comes to disposable income. They got the monies. Monies, money, monies. The trend is being led by properties in California. Both an early adopter of relaxed cannabis laws and the nation's top grower of cannabis. Among the handful of hospitality players they're seeking to offer, um, among, I'm sorry, among the handful of hospitality players there seeking to offer a more elevated cannabis experience is Humboldt Social, which operates several businesses, including its Oyster Beach Bayfront Resort, Vacation Rentals, Four Room Humble Bay Social Club, Hotel, Papa and Barkley Social D- Dispensary and Spa, and more, all in Humboldt County, California. Just over a year ago, Humboldt Social debuted a second hotel concept, the 22-room Scotia Lodge, located near Redwood State Park in Scotia, California. The property, which plays in the four-star space and is open to working with advisors, lacks any obvious weed-related theming. Instead, the hotel fosters a weed-friendly environment through amenities like a cannabis delivery menu and an outdoor smoking area accessible to hotel and restaurant guests. Indoors, smoking of any kind isn't allowed, but guests are encouraged to enjoy cannabis edibles and tinctures in room. Some of the companies doing cannabis hospitality are just saying, hey, bring your own cannabis, we're cannabis friendly. And other places are getting a little bed and breakfast license and having bongs in the lo- in the lobby, said John O'Connor, Humboldt Social founder and president. We want to be supportive of customer interests, but we also want to be a place where their aunt and grandma can come and stay too. Humboldt Social is eyeing further expansion in the hospitality space for the coming year. According to O'Connor, the company is currently in talks with hotels in the Southern California market finalizing negotiations to oversee food and beverage, dispensary, smoking area, and cannabis-infused spa operations at their properties. Our version of cannabis hospitality is like Napa 2.0, O'Connor said. If you went to the Napa Valley many years ago, it was tacky bed and breakfast with wine wallpaper. Now it's world-class resorts. 
And we envision that's what Humboldt County can be post-national legalization. Like Humboldt Social, the Madrones and the Brambles, two boutique sister properties located just outside Philo, California, in Mendocino County, are following the wine hospitality blueprint. The pair, which have combined 14 accommodations and will work with advisors, have for long successfully leveraged their wine country surroundings, offering guests access to two on-site wine tasting rooms. More recently, however, co-owners Jim Roberts and Brian Atkinson have leaned into Mendocino's solid reputation for craft cannabis cultivation, opening a dispensary at the Madrones called the Bohemian Chemist. The dispensary showcases its own house brand composed of locally sourced products like cannabis grown at a nearby farm also owned and operated by Roberts and Adkinson. We already had a crowd of people coming here for wine, and we wanted to make sure we introduced cannabis in a way that remained approachable and tolerable, said Adkinson. And you know, those guests are overwhelmingly curious about cannabis. I think some four- or five-star places are reluctant to embrace cannabis tourism because they're afraid of alienating their clientele. But our experience has been that it does not alienate our clientele at all. Encouraged by positive feedback, the Madrones and the Brambles began building out more robust cannabis tourism-related programming this summer, including cannabis farm tours and a cannabis-infused seven-course dinner series, with each course incorporating a microdose of approximately two milligrams of cannabis. That's smart. Yeah. Yeah. Later this fall, the properties plan to debut a cannabis consumption lounge, which will include a restaurant. Additionally, couples celebrating a wedding at the Madrones and the Brambles can now book bud tending service for their big event. Amazing. Just like people want to have drinks at weddings, we're finding that a lot of young people are really wanting to consume at weddings, added Adkinson. So it's another indicator, I think, that cannabis is becoming more and more mainstream. Bottom line, We want to normalize it. That's pretty sweet. Awesome. I mean, dream. We have a dream to do something. That would be so cool. One day. Yeah. We know what we want to do. It'll be that way everywhere eventually. Right? Right? Yep. Hopefully. International news. Yep. Uh, Australia's Green Party is mounting a bid to legalize cannabis. Hmm. Our boy Tez down there, Reefer Terps. What's up, fellas? Jamaica's industry investment and commerce minister said the country is poised to become a major player in the global medical cannabis market. And then another one from Australia. Uh, More and more people are are going to the medical side of cannabis as sales are surging. And uh, they did a study and a little bit of the illicit or traditional market sales have dropped a little bit because more and more people are going to uh, medical there, which is great, which will in turn help get it recreational one day this is near and dear to my heart because mm-hmm. i because i because i'm excited for what we have planned mm, yeah but the pumpkin bong yeah i've always wanted to do one now i yes. was a, i've i've done it i've done an apple before mm-hmm. when i worked at a restaurant uh the, one of the cooks and one of the waitresses came up to me and said do you know how to make an apple pipe i'm like yeah man it'd take me like two minutes this is what i need get me all these things and i'll make it for you and i made it for him in like 10 minutes and they're like really i'm like yeah it's not that hard you just need this this and you're done good and they because they forgot their one and they went out back and smoked <laughs> and uh, uh <laughs> so but i've never had the opportunity to do a pumpkin bong and i've seen them and i've always wanted to do them and i'm super stoked and we found this article about a pumpkin bog. And then we felt inspired. We did. So, keep listening. Uh, the pumpkin bong, the new way to get high this fall. Try this unique and fun way of getting high this fall. There is no other food that is more famous than pumpkins during fall, right? They're associated with Halloween and Thanksgiving, making them one of the most festive icons of the season. But there's more to using pumpkins than simply carving them out for display or for making pumpkin spice lattes. You can actually make a bong out of pumpkins. This novel way of getting high can be lots of fun. But using organic mediums for smoking is really nothing new. Smoking out of an apple has been around for many decades, as Mr. Weedman said. But hey, why not give it a try? Mr. Weedman and I, here we go, listen in are inviting all of you 
to join us in our first annual pumpkin bong contest. So get creative. Um, we're going to post all of the information. This is kind of an evolving idea, but it is, it's happening. Um, so we're going to have rules and uh, guidelines. We're going to post them on all of our social media uh, in the coming days. Uh, we'll explain how the whole contest will work. So just get creative and snap some photos, and then you're going to be sharing the photos. Video. Yeah, video. Video would be even little, better. Yeah, a little, little short video. Whatever you can do, we're going to figure out how we're going to compile all this data and where we're going to have you send it all to, and uh, and then we're going to pick a winner before Halloween. And actually, we're going to pick three winners. Yes. And each of those three winners are going to receive an eight decades um, Stomp the Stigma T-shirt and an eight decades steamroller. Be so, creative. Yeah, yeah. We want to we see want some creative. really fun stuff. Now, here's the thing: you might not be able to cut a bunch of holes in it. Mm -hmm. You could. This is. I have some ideas too, but uh, paint. Whatever, make it fun. Yeah, make, just I just don't want to see a pumpkin with just be a hole in it. it. Could have hair, whatever. Man, you're gonna have to impress the misses here. Try to be original. You're gonna have to impress Mrs. I know Weed it's Man. hard not to go on Etsy and like do some Google searches. I don't give a shit. Do some fun. Do some fun. We want some fun stuff. Blow We're gonna away. repost this stuff too and hashtag mm -hmm. and and at you too, so everybody could see what each participant is doing. Yeah. So it's going to be fun. Um, we're going to post the rules, like I said, in the guidelines on social media in the coming days. Uh, and then also the link to this article that I read will be there because it gives some descriptions and discussions, um, a little step by step on how to make a simple uh, pumpkin bong. And then you can elaborate from there. But um, also a little pointer. Uh, some pumpkins will work better than others when it comes to making a bong out of them. Look for pumpkins that have height since it's more important than girth. <laughs> that sounds funny. Um, <laughs> height is crucial for having adequate space for a mouthpiece and a down stem. When you're at the pumpkin patch, simply look for a pumpkin that you can easily imagine turning into a bong. And don't use one that's too large since it would be hard to puff from. Handheld sizes will be more convenient. So again... Watch for the upcoming news on this, and um, it's well, going to be fun. Even international people get yeah, involved. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, we'll mail pictures. this anywhere. We, wanna, yeah. we want you to win. So, And if you can't get a pumpkin, I'll even take a gourd. A gourd? Yeah. A gourd bong? Yeah. yeah I'd even not? take that, too. So if you can't get a pumpkin in your area, something happened, I don't know. Just in case, if you can't get a pumpkin, a gourd, I'll even accept one of those. It has to be a those. fresh like, gourd, though, yes. not a dry one. Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. Nothing, nothing fake. It can't be a, a fake plastic pumpkin. Yeah, no styrofoam pumpkins. Nothing. No, it has to no, be has yeah. to be a living pumpkin. Yep. That grew from the ground. Same thing with your gourd. Okay. Or else you get no steamrollers. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gonna be fun because we're gonna do them and we're we're gonna yeah. put, we're gonna do reels with them and I have some wait. fun. You're gonna see me uh, as I. Uh, um, Evolve into my reels. The Sunday morning smoke sesh. We'll have a pumpkin bong at least once or twice during the month mm -hmm. of uh, October. And and me and uh, Mrs. Weedman will make sure we're doing it together, making it because I'm terrible. One of my favorite. <laughs> I'm a good cleaner of the pumpkin. I'm just a terrible carver. <laughs> <laughs> One of my uh, favorite Chicago uh, radio stations is Q101. It's an alternative radio station. And the afternoon DJ is Lauren, and she's a total freak. And she loves Halloween. So she was so excited today. She's like, spooky season. Spooky season's coming. So she c considers all of October Does she, Is she a smoker? I, I don't know. Consumer? I don't know. But she loves spooky season, starting October 1 <laughs> and going through the month. There's so, people already with their Halloween Yeah, we're going to have up. some fun with this. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll post it all. We'll post it on our social media, like probably in the next day or two once we have all the rules up and then we'll keep on posting it because I know some people are still not caught up to this episode yet. Uh, so we'll start posting it more and more so everyone gets it. So, and talking about it on the next three episodes. So uh, yep. for the rest of the month, last thing, what are the best cannabis strains for focus? Here are some for you. If you can find them in your area, white fire, OG good for focus. Lemon tie gets you good, clear headed and focus. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Oh. Uh, what, too cold? Yeah, it just made me think of Christmas. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Uh, mm. It won't get you dumb stoned, but it'll get you focus stoned. Dutch Treat. 
Mrs. Wee Man's Dutch. We gotta get you one of those one day. Mm-hmm. Uh, piney terpenes on that one, and it'll also clear your head and cere- cerebral stimulation. Hmm. Uh, Canna Sue to Sue. Canna T S U. Uh, it is good to chill you out and get you focused. Jagu. Jagu is a great strain for doing that. Really? Jagu? <laughs> Clearing out your mind and relaxing the body. Uh, Bay Dream, which if you like Granddaddy Perp, Bay Dream, uh, which I do. I've never had Bay Dream, but I like Granddaddy Perp. It has a sweet flavor, and it uh, will help give you a cerebral high, but provides nice, long-lasting fury that helps you get active for everything that needs to get done by fi- before 5 p.m. Harla, Harley to Sue. Uh, it's a CBD uh, strain, and this is good to relax the body, focus, and the mind. So there's your eight strains to help you out. And since we started a new tradition last episode, we're going to keep on doing this every week. We're going to smoke our way out, our aren't we? Goodbye. Our goodbye. Goodbye. Good, goodbye smoke to everyone out there. But before we do that, I want to thank everyone for listening around the world. I appreciate you all so much. I appreciate you getting involved with us and 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 having some fun with us. And man, it just feels good. You doing the goodbye hit? Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. gotta do the goodbye Here I go. hit. There you go. <laughs> Don't forget, everybody, check out eightdecades.com for all of our handles, our social media handles, our emails, our bio, our story, <laughs> our blogs, just everything. Our products. So proud of Mrs. Weedman. I was talking to some people about it uh, this week about just how how well Mrs. Weedman made uh, that website. And someone went on and, and shot me a text by going, that was a really sweet looking website. I'm like, yeah, it's not bad. And uh, she did a phenomenal job and, and really created some great stuff. But not only just that, just to f- reach out to us on our handles, man. We, we, we love you all out there, you know. I'm going to do my goodbye oh, hit while, while Mrs. Weedman says one or two words. One or two. Three. One, two, three. Well, everybody... Have a great week. Any of you that might be listening from South Florida, Central Florida, up the East Coast, wherever this storm is headed, stay safe. And uh, we're thinking about all of you. Um, Yeah. I think that's it. Uh, And as Paulie always says. What does he say? Smoke smart. Puff puffing away. Puff puff pass.